In this video, we're going to take a look at how to make an RF channel power measurement on a bursty low duty cycle signal like this wireless LAN beacon signal we're seeing here using the Tektronix MDO4000. This is a tricky measurement to make because you have to ensure that the channel power measurement is made only when the burst is present and not when it isn't. So the first thing we need to do is to trigger on that RF burst. If we bring up the RF menu for the spectrum analyzer, we can see that the spectrum analyzer is currently in free run mode. So we'll switch it to triggered. And next we need to go set up the trigger conditions. I'll bring up the trigger menu here. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the trigger mode from auto to normal. Auto trigger basically says if I don't get a trigger event within 100 milliseconds or so, I'm going to grab an acquisition anyway. Normal trigger will only grab acquisitions in response to a trigger. So that's what we want. So the next thing we want to do is set up what do I want to trigger on. I want to trigger on the rising edge of RF power. So I'll use the edge trigger, but I'm going to change my source from channel 1 down to RF power. Now one word of caution with this is the RF power trigger is a broadband RF power detector operating in whatever frequency band the analyzer happens to be in. And in this setting we can see that the RF trigger bandwidth covers from 1 megahertz to 3.75 gigahertz. So if we want to trigger on a specific RF signal, we have to ensure that's kind of the dominant uh, RF signal that's coming into the analyzer at that point. So with that done being said, we can now adjust the level that I want to trigger on. And as I roll this down, we'll actually reach a point where now I'm actually triggering on that RF signal and I can actually see these bursts occurring pretty reliably. The next thing we need to do is ensure that we're making the spectrum measurement at the right location in time, that we're not straddling the rising or falling edge of the burst. In order to do that, we need to look at the RF energy in the time domain. If I again bring up the RF menu, I can bring up my RF versus time traces and turn on an amplitude versus time trace. Using the B multipurpose knob, I can change the vertical scale of that and now I can actually see RF amplitude versus time. Okay, then I can actually, if I slow the horizontal speed down here a little bit, I can grab a little more of that burst over time. And what this allows me to do is see that the spectrum measurement is being made right here where this orange bar is. So half that spectrum measurement is actually being made when the burst wasn't present. So I can use the pan control here to move that spectrum time to be fully within that burst. And now that I'm fully inside the burst, I'm going to get a more consistent spectrum measurement of what's going on in that burst at that time. So now I'm ready to turn the measurement on. So I'll hit the measure button here. Say I want to make a frequency domain measurement and I will select channel power and I'll configure that measurement until I want it to be a 20 megahertz channel power measurement. So I can see where that measurement is being made. It's right after the burst came up and now I'm making an accurate channel power measurement. We can position our measurement to be anywhere within the burst that we like, but we can see we can get nice consistent results as long as we're making a measurement within that burst. If we hadn't made that adjustment, the measurement would have been made straddling that leading edge, and we wouldn't have gotten an accurate channel power measurement because we were measuring part of the energy when the signal wasn't there. Anyway, I hope you found this uh, video useful, and thank you for watching.